Hello, and thank you for taking the time to tune in to this brief New Year message. I hope that you're keeping safe and well, and taking a bit of time to reflect on the year that's gone by and the new year that will begin uh, just one second after midnight tonight. I wonder what sort of year 2021 has been for you. It's been an unusual year for almost all of us, I'm sure, uh, in this world. And who knows what the next year will hold. A new year is often a time uh, to reflect, but also a time uh, to form ambitions and resolutions about the coming year. Perhaps this next year is is the year to get a hold uh, on our physical life, to, to maybe go on a new diet or to get some more fresh air and exercise. Or maybe it's a year to get a new hobby, to start something new, a project that we've always wanted to get to grips with or uh, that book we've always meant to write or that language we've always meant to learn. I wonder what your resolutions are for this next year. And all of these are important and have their place. Uh, And yet I want to ask you uh, what I think is the most important question as we go from one year into the next. And that is, where do I stand? Where do you stand with God? Where do you stand with God? You know, many people, when they ask the question, how can I be accepted by God? Is it possible for somebody like me to be accepted by God? They often think, well, a little bit like we can be tempted to think at this time of year, I'm going to become a new person. I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to maybe get along to church a bit more than I have done in the past, or maybe go along for the first time. I'm going to uh, put a bit more money in the collection plate or, or give a bit more to charity. I'm going to pray every now and again, or I'm going to be kinder to people. I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to renovate. I'm going to renovate myself and make myself pleasing to God. Well, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that that is impossible. Impossible. Why? Well, because we're told there that even our righteous deeds, so even the best things that you and I could do or say or think, they're like filthy rags, we're told before the the eyes of a a holy, pure and righteous God. So even the best things that you and I could do in this next year, they're not enough. They're not enough to please a holy and a righteous God. So it's not enough just to say, new year, new me, I'm going to be pleasing to God. Well, is there hope for us? Is there hope for us to be pleasing to God, to be accepted by him in this coming year, or even in this last day of 2021? Well, absolutely there is. In John's Gospel and in chapter 3, there's a fascinating conversation that takes place between the Lord Jesus and a man called Nicodemus, an important man, a Jewish man. He was uh, frightened to approach the Lord Jesus in the open, so he comes to him at night and he has a fascinating conversation with him. And the first thing that the Lord says to him is found in John chapter 3 and verse 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be born again? Well, you might hear Christians refer to themselves as born again Christians. That's how I would refer to myself. I am a born again Christian. And what that means is that I don't try to renovate myself or reinvent myself to please God. We have to have a completely brand new start. A completely fresh start. We need to be made anew by God himself. What does it mean to be born again? How can we be born again, made new? Well, the answer comes later in the chapter. And this is the most famous verse in the Bible, John chapter 3 and verse 16. A wonderful verse, loved by many Christians because it summarises the Christian message so beautifully. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let me read that again. For God so loved the world, that means everyone, that he gave his only son, that whoever, again, that means everyone, believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I wonder if you believe in Jesus Christ. I wonder as you watch this video, what you make of Jesus Christ. As you reflect on 2021, as you look on into 2022, what does Jesus Christ mean to you personally? Then he goes on in verse 17 to say this, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Might be saved through him. How? You know, the Bible tells us that the wages or the result of sin, that's the the things that you and I say and do and think that are wrong, 
The result of those things is death, is death. And yet that price of death has been paid by the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. God, in his great love, sent his one and only Son into this world. We just remembered that at Christmas time. He came down into this world and he came to save sinners. And he did that by going to the cross. And at the cross, he was, he was put to death. Yes, he was put to death by the Romans, but he willingly gave up his life. He willingly gave up his life. Why? To pay the death penalty, the death price due to you and to me for the sins that we have committed. And yet that's not the end of the story because three days later, just as the Bible had said would happen, just as the Lord himself had promised, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And he was victorious over death and the grave and sin. And he's a living saviour today. And born again Christians like myself believe firmly that Jesus is alive today and that he is still saving anyone who will come to him. Repenting of their sin, that means turning away from it and placing their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection to pay the price for their sin. You need a saviour. Whoever you are watching this video today, you need a saviour from sin. And God has provided only one saviour for all sinners, for all time, and that is Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave. Let me take you, as we close, to 2 Corinthians and chapter 5. And there's a wonderful verse here that summarises uh, what happens in the Christian's life once they have placed their faith and trust in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that means they have placed their faith and trust in him and he's become their personal saviour. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, the new has come. A new creation. So as you enter into 2022, don't make it your project to just reinvent yourself, to make yourself better for God, but rather place your faith and trust in Jesus Perhaps for the first time, perhaps you've never become a Christian, then tonight is the night to do it. The last day of 2021, take as your opportunity to place your faith and trust in Jesus and be made completely new. Born again, a new creation. And that way, we can be pleasing to God. We can be forgiven of all of our sin when we have placed our faith and trust in Christ. Perhaps you're not convinced by the message of Jesus. Perhaps you don't know and you want to know more about him. Make it your resolution in 2022 to find out more about Jesus Christ. The New Testament begins with four biographies of Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They're eyewitness accounts of his life and his ministry, his death, his resurrection. And I would encourage you to take one of those Gospels and to read it with an open mind. Perhaps even to pray to God and ask him to reveal the truth about Jesus to you. If you would like a gospel free of charge, then please get in touch with me. The details are in the description of the video below and I would be delighted to send you a gospel free of charge. Make it a resolution of yours in this new year to find out more about Jesus. Thank you for listening.